Hi everyone and welcome back to the Embedded Dude. In a previous video I have been talking about the ESP32C6 system on a chip and its Wi-Fi 6 features. Today I want to show you an alternative that can really challenge Espressif and the ESP32C6. So let's get into it. A quick sponsorship statement. All tools and equipment you see in today's video have been purchased by me with my own money and are not in any way sponsored by anyone. I'm also not getting paid or getting products or services in exchange for my opinions and thoughts in this video. Let's start by looking at the Wi-Fi 6 features that make battery-powered devices more attractive. With 802.11x, Wi-Fi has become more IoT-friendly. Until the release of 11x, there wasn't much focus on power saving and increased efficiency. Prior to 11x, the focus was mainly on throughput. With the 11x release, features have been introduced that benefit IoT devices using Wi-Fi. Let's take a look at the main features in more detail. With a focus on efficiency, the improvements are mainly because of more efficient use of the spectrum, by addressing network contention, and by new power saving technologies such as target wait time. With 802.11ax, OFDMA has been introduced, which allows the bandwidth to be used more efficiently with low bandwidth devices like IoT devices. Instead of allocating an entire channel to only one device, it can be split up to serve multiple devices. The available bandwidth per device gets less, but for small IoT devices, this is usually not a problem. Before Wi-Fi 6, power saving techniques were based on beacons, but that means that devices need to wake up in fairly short intervals to not lose the connection. Sleeping for tens of seconds, minutes or more wasn't possible. With target wake time, depending on your application, the power consumption can be significantly reduced by sleeping much longer without losing the connection. When using individual target wake time, for example, a device can negotiate the wake-up intervals with the access point. Then it only needs to wake up when agreed. Besides being in sleep for longer periods, that also means it's now possible to schedule wake-ups of multiple devices in a way that the network gets less contested. Again, depending on the application, target wake time can reduce the power consumption a lot compared to a complete deep sleep where we lose a connection. For example, instead of going into a deep sleep that requires a full boot up on the ESP32C6, it can stay in a light sleep consuming around 35 microamps, which allows it to also wake up much faster and by that consumes less energy. At some point when sleeping periods are getting very long, a full disconnect in deep sleep is more power efficient than target wake time. But as I said, that depends on your application. So building battery powered Wi-Fi devices has become more attractive. Espressif has released the ESP32C6 earlier this year, and so far there has been no real alternatives as far as I know. But that might have changed now. Let's take a look. The SIWX917 from Silicon Labs has been announced earlier this year, and just recently Scilabs has officially released some more information around it. According to Scilab, it's a system on a chip for ultra low power IoT wireless devices for Wi Fi, Bluetooth, and Meta with secure cloud connectivity. Optimal for developing battery operated devices that need long battery life. The full datasheet is not publicly available yet and as a private person I am not able to order it yet. However, there is enough information to compare it to the ESP32C6. So let's get started. Looking at the hardware block diagram of the 917 we can see that it has two independent processors with individual memories. Both are connected via the ARM Advanced High Performance Bus. The application processor, which is also handling the peripherals, is an ARM Cortex-M4F and the networking processor is a ThreadArc processor. ThreadArc has been developed by RedPine Signals. In 2020, Silicon Labs acquired RedPine's Wi-Fi and Bluetooth ethics with a goal to drive IoT revenue growth and to accelerate the Wi-Fi 6 product development. I think we are now seeing some of the results of this acquisition. So let's take a closer look and compare the new SIWX917 to the ESP32C6. Let's start by comparing the main application processors, the high power processors. The ESP32C6 has a single core RISC-V 32-bit architecture 
running up to 160 MHz. The Scilabs has a single core ARM Cortex M4F running up to 180 MHz. A notable difference here is that the M4F has a floating point unit in hardware, whereas the C6 only supports floating point operations in software, which can impact performance quite a bit. Additionally, the M4F has an AI and machine learning accelerator in hardware. When looking at the memory, a notable difference is that the Scilabs can have up to 8 MB internal PS RAM and flash. The SP32C6 requires external flash, which consumes PCB space. Besides supporting internal PS RAM and flash, the Scilabs also supports external PS RAM and flash up to 60 MB. Since it has an ARM Cortex core, it also supports serial wire debugging as well as JTAG. The ESP32C6 has a dedicated low power coprocessor, which the Scilabs does not have. The Scilabs also supports low power operation using the M4 with dedicated low power memory and peripherals. It will be very interesting to see how well that works. But knowing that Scilabs is known for making super low power microcontrollers, I expect a good performance. So next, let's look at the wireless features. Comparing the Wi Fi capabilities of the two, Obviously, both support 802.11ax and only 2.4 GHz, not 5 GHz. But the ESP32C6 also supports 40 MHz channels with 802.11b GNN. Both support station and access point mode, but only station mode when using 802.11ax. Both support a bunch of Wi-Fi 6 features to save power, like individual target wake time and intra-PBDU. But the Scilabs also supports broadcast target wake time so that access points can create wake-up schedules for entire groups of stations. Both support WPA2 and WPA3, but the ESP32C6 also supports WPA3 Enterprise. When it comes to the max data rates, Scilabs has not released them yet. But looking at the supported modulation coding schemes, I expect them to be slightly below the ESP32C6 for 802.11ax, and due to the support of only 20 MHz channels, also lower when using 802.11bgnm. Looking at the other wireless technologies, the Scilabs supports BLE in version 5.4, whereas the C6 only supports 5.3. On the other hand, the C6 supports Thread 1.3 and Zigbee 3.0. Both support Meta. Let's continue by looking at the peripherals. Both are packed with a bunch of useful peripherals, and which one is the better candidate for your project depends on your needs. To highlight the differences, the Scilabs has up to 16 ADC channels and a digital to analog converter. It has a touch sensor controller and more general purpose IOs, whereas the ESP32C6 on the other hand has a USB 2.0 controller on board, which also supports JTAG debugging and saves an additional UART to USB bridge. The Scilabs has two times I2S on board compared to one on the ESP32C6. The ESP32C6 has two two-wire automotive controller on board, which can be used to build CAN devices, and also a general-purpose parallel interface to connect to LCD displays or cameras. So far, Scilabs hasn't released any infos about the parallel interface for the 917, so that's a question mark for now. However, the Scilabs has three op-amps and two comparators on board, which can be very handy depending on your application. Okay, so now let's have a look at the power consumption of the two candidates. Unfortunately, Scilabs has not released a lot of information on how much the 917 consumes in the different sleep modes, but I expect it to be below the ESP32C6 in deep sleep. Based on the information released, I expect something around 3 to 5 micrograms. It will be very interesting to see how much the Scilabs consumes when using, for example, target wake time and keeping a connection. The ESP32C6 can go down to 35 microamps in out of sleep mode using individual target wake time, and that is using the room module with external flash. A noteworthy difference between the two is the supported operating voltage range. The Scilabs supports a much wider range, starting from 1.75 volts, whereas the C6 can only operate down to 3 volts. Another aspect is the quality of the available software both the development environments, but also the drivers and middleware. Nothing is more frustrating than bugs that prevent us from progressing with our project. The C6 software is not perfect yet, and I'm dealing with some things right now, but Espressive support is good, also for hobbyists. 
and a lot of people are using them. Scilab states that the Simplicity Studio will support the 970. I don't have much experience with Simplicity Studio, but I will definitely try it out as soon as I get my hands on a 917 dev kit. Last but not least, the pricing of the new Scilabs 917 will be very very interesting. The prices for the C6 room modules went down a little and I personally believe that Scilabs will not be able to beat that. However, I hope it won't be super crazy so that it's feasible to make some nice IoT products with the 917. So let's wrap it up. What are the key takeaways from this comparison? Both are packed with useful peripherals, but with differences. Depending on what you need, you might choose one over the other. However, if you are looking for a Wi-Fi 6 system on a chip that supports 1.8 volt operation, the Scilabs might be the right candidate for your project. If you have limited PCB space, the Scilabs 917 might be the better option, if you can live with the internal memory. If the Scilabs is more power efficient than the C6, that has to be seen, but knowing that the people at Scilabs are experts in making low power controllers, I believe the 917 will be at least at the same level if not below the C6. Interesting will be the support for hobbyists from Scilabs. Espressive's support is good and there is a huge hobbyist community using ESP32 controller. As always, a huge factor will be the pricing of the new 917. I personally do not believe it will be lower than the ESP32 C6, but if it's reasonable, I will get one to explore its capabilities and share them with you. If you like that type of content, then please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.